Welcome to the final installment of the three-part Make It Move series. For the final entry, we will use SOLIDWORKS Motion Simulation to figure out some design constraints for this robot we have used throughout the series. I will use the same data from FIRST Robotics Team 3506 Yeti to figure out how much initial velocity the robot needs to provide to fire the foam projectile into the goal successfully. This tool requires a license of SOLIDWORKS Premium and you will need to turn on the add-in for motion. Motion simulation is the most powerful and most detailed way to make your assembly move because it will actually simulate reality with inputs such as gravity, friction, and forces. Because there are so many capabilities within motion simulation, there's no way I could teach everyone about it in just three minutes. I can, however, show you a powerful example using projectile motion. Using the initial velocity data, we can design and program the robot to fire the ball at the desired speed on the field and know that our shot will be pretty close to the goal. Making a consistent shooter in FIRST Robotics is hard, so knowing what exit velocity the ball needs is a good starting point so that we can select motors and gearboxes for the design. Since I don't know what the velocity is going to be, I'm going to guess and fire the ball and see what happens until the ball goes where we want it. I can run a design study later so that I get a full range of successful shots. Step by step, I will go through what I did to get this to work well. Firstly, I did not need to run the simulation with the entire robot, and in general it's not a great idea to run a simulation without simplifying the problem first. I started with the ground, and the ball where it would exit the shooter on the robot, and the goal with materials defined for any moving parts. Turn on the add-in and create a new motion study. Make sure the drop-down is set to Motion Simulation. If you do not see this option, it means the add-in is turned off, or you do not have a license with SOLIDWORKS that is able to use motion. I added an initial velocity to the ball by right clicking on the ball and hitting initial velocity. For this simulation, I had a sketch on the right plane of the ball that had two lines 45 degrees from each other to represent the direction vector for my initial velocity, and then when I went to create the velocity in my assembly, I could click on that line. I don't know what speed I need to fire the ball at yet, so I guess 9 meters per second. Don't forget to add gravity in the correct direction going down. Next, we want to plot the path of the ball so we can see the reaction of the ball. You can actually see my trace path during all of these steps. I had a point placed inside the middle of the ball, and that was basically where the origin was for this purpose. Right-click the ball and create a motion plot. Use displacement, trace path, and click the point in the center of the ball and click OK. Now I can run the analysis to see where the ball goes. As I fired this ball from 8 feet away, 45 degrees, with my goal about 9 feet high, I hit too low and miss. If I change my velocity and run a couple of times, I can see the reaction of the ball until the ball goes through the goal. Rather than guessing, I can create a design study that will tell me the correct velocity range. To do this, create a new design study. We will create a variable to vary the initial velocity from 9 to 11 meters per second in steps of 0.5 so that we fire five shots and see which shots go in. Follow these on-screen steps and we will create a sensor to take the guesswork out of this equation. Next I created a displacement sensor between the center of the ball and the center of the goal. We want the model minimum distance between these two points and then we want to put a threshold for error in the design study to allow about 0.1 or 0.2 meters of play so that we get at least one successful run. We can then run the model again with higher steps and vary the velocity a bit finer with those findings. With these findings after running this design a couple of times, we have to fire the ball between 9.5 and 9.6 meters per second or we fire too high or too low and the ball bounces out of the goal. With these capabilities, SOLIDWORKS can provide you with the tools to get your designs on the move as fast as possible. This Make It Move series has been a blast to do, so leave us some comments and tell us if you would like to see more content like this. Thank you for watching TPM's 3 Minute Thursdays and the Make It Move web series.